Hello people! Uh, today I'm gonna give you a very quick video about modifying uh, a brake drum mount for a race car. Um, uh, it has two things to be done. Uh, one being uh, uh, re-drilling these holes uh, five millimeter closer to the, the center of the, the wheel hub. And another thing will be um, removing some material here so this nut can be tightened. And I've already done one of these, but this is the other one. Um, and this uh, is for the same car that I made these wheel hubs. As you can see, I just finished making the other one and I still have to edit the videos. I think I have some pretty interesting video material for you. But first let me give you a quick video about this because it's such a quick job. So this is how I have centered the two holes and also you can see how I'm holding this. It's on the rotary table which uh, makes it easy to do everything in one setup because these are in an angle so I can, um, um, I can indicate these and then use the rotary table to uh, to to indicate it and remove the necessary material. Uh, and now I have uh, indicated the uh, hole right here using a test indicator uh, on the spindle and it's within about two hundredths of a millimeter which is fine. And I'm gonna switch to uh, 14 millimeter Carbide end mill, which is right here, and I'm gonna re drill the hole. And another thing that will come to you at the um, wheel hub machining project video is that I finally fixed my z axis scale on the DRO, so all the three axes are now working, and that's awesome! 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 So Okay, let me get set up. Okay, I think this is a pretty good view. So what I'm doing first, um, actually I have to lock the, all the axes first. Which is now done. And then I will move Y axis 5 millimeters. The locks are a little bit loose on the Y axis, so I can still uh, I can still move the axis while having the locks on. I think someday I will have to tighten the locks. But when machining, they are tight enough. Oops. It's a little sticky when the locks are on. Okay. Now let's bring the table up, start the spindle, I think this is 400 rpm. And the z-axis really is working now, which is great. Using the quill to feed down first, just like that, and let me give you a better view. No, you should be able to see. Too bad the lightning is a little bit bad, and I cannot help it anyhow. But I think you will still see, see still see pretty well. So. I'm running automatic feed and the feeding speed is 125 millimeters per minute. And the um, air mill is uh, hanging out pretty far from the collet because I need to clear this 
this edge right here. So let's go. That's it, we made it through. Now for the next job. Okay, I have now indicated the original clearance cut right here. I know it's a pretty short run, but this is again, it's just for clearance, so it's not very accurate. But I would say it's now. It's now pretty much, pretty much zero, so that's where I'm gonna leave it. Okay, the setup is almost ready. I have the 30mm uh, high quality, high speed steel end mill in place. Uh, but I run into a problem of uh, not having enough travel in my y-axis, as you can see. So I have to move the RAM back and I think I haven't shown you that before. So this is how it works. Uh, the gib is right here and it has uh, this bolt right here uh, which fits in a 17mm socket. So you uh, loosen the gib and then by turning this handle, the whole ram moves back and forth. And I already moved it, so I only have to tighten the gib again. And that's it. It's a pretty nice, nice feature. And as you can see, the ram has quite a bit of travel. I think it's like half a meter or almost two feet. Okay. Okay, I guess this gives you a pretty good angle. Uh, I'm sorry the lens is a little bit dirty, I'll have to clean it. So, I have everything set up. I have zeroed the z-axis and the y-axis. And I will do conventional milling, of course. Um, first I will feed in. I will return the z-axis to zero which should be here, and then I'm taking off five and a half millimeters, so I think I'm gonna start with three and a half and, and do it in two passes and taking more in the first pass because the second pass uh, should remove more material because the pieces in an angle. So the further I go, the more I cut. I think this looks good. So we should be ready to go. And this is the highest gear of the low range, so it's a little bit loud. Okay, let's go. Let me get my glasses first, actually. <coughs> I can use these ones. Even though it's missing one of these. Okay, let's go.
like silk. Surface finish is okay. Left a little bit of nip in here, I think I will have to remove it. I'm pretty happy. And this is this is some kind of tool steel or a, or some type of a higher quality steel, so it's pretty tough. Okay, I think uh, I won't show you the other side because it's completely similar to, to the one that I just did. So, I hope you like this short video and when I have time I will edit the video about making the wheel hubs themselves. And actually I got a better editing program which is way faster than the old one I was using. So, now you actually have some hopes of getting some videos. Okay, so thank you for watching and see you again. Bye.